Welcome to section 11.2. Okay, gentle people, in this lecture, what we're going to talk about are standard reduction potentials. And what I should talk about is this idea of potential. So here's what we're going to say is if I had two places and I were to put a ball on one of these places, what I can say is the potential energy for that ball to go down because it is at different heights and thus the ball has potential energy to drop from one place to the next place. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing with an electron. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have chemical A and chemical B and what I'm going to ask is what is the likelihood or the potential for this electron to, to jump from chemical A to chemical B. So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about potential. Now, what you'll notice is this difference here is relative. So what I have to do with potentials is I have to relate one chemical to another. So what chemists have done is they have picked a cell that is going to establish a zero point. And so this is just chosen at arbitrary because we want to have some place where we can relate how much an electron wants to go from one place to another. And so what we're going to talk about is something called the standard hydrogen electrode. Now to make this cell, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pump in hydrogen gas at 1 atm. And I'm going to pump it into a solution of H plus aqueous ions that are at 1 molar. Now to help conduct electricity, because I have a gas and a liquid, I'm going to use a platinum electrode. Now the platinum isn't going to do any chemistry. It's just there to serve as a wire for electrons to move in and out and get in contact to my aqueous H plus and my hydrogen gas. So once I've established this zero point, I can go ahead and analyze other chemicals. The idea is I'm going to go ahead and build an electrochemical cell. On one end, I'm going to have my standard hydrogen electrode and then on the other end, it's something that I'm going to analyze. So if I were to add the two potentials, the hydrogen electrode and the thing I'm going to analyze, that would give me the total potential of the cell, which I can measure using my voltmeter. Now, if I arbitrarily say that this hydrogen electrode is zero potential, then the cell is going to actually measure the potential of whatever I'm trying to analyze. So let's go ahead and say I want to measure the potential of zinc going to zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons. Well, what I would do is I would have my SHE electrode. And remember, this is my zero point. And then on the other container, I'm going to put my zinc metal and my zinc ions. So when I go ahead and hook this up to a potentiometer or a voltmeter, what I measure is 0.76. And because this is zero, what I can say is that is going to be the potential of my cell, but it's also the potential of zinc going to zinc 2 plus. Now, like what we've done with all the stuff in thermodynamics, we can construct a table. And this is called the standard reduction potential table. We did all these experiments where we compared all these chemicals to my hydrogen electrode. And what we did is we measure the potential that was produced when we did each one of these chemicals. Now, what I want you to notice in this table is everything is written as a reduction, meaning I take the chemical compound I'm interested in, add electrons, and I will see what the measured potential is going to be. So remember what potential is. It is measuring the propensity for the electron to go from one chemical to the other so let's go ahead and see how we can use this table. For one thing, we can go ahead and calculate the potential of any galvanic cell using that table. Let's say that you're working with Elon Musk. Elon Musk wants to build batteries for his new Tesla cars, and he got this great deal on aluminum and iodine. And he asks you to build a battery out of these things. And he asks, what's the potential that you can get out of this type of battery? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and look up the standard reduction potentials of aluminum and iodine. And so if we look on the table, here are the two values for aluminum and iodine, respectively. 
Now, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and reverse the lowest potential. Now, I'm going to explain in the next lecture why you're going to do this, but just rule of thumb, the one that's the lowest is the one that you want to reverse. So in this case, negative 1.66 is lower than 0.54. So I'm going to go ahead and reverse that reaction. Now, the way that cell potentials work is if you reverse the reaction, you're going to have to reverse the potential. So now what I've done is instead of writing the aluminum reaction as a reduction, I've written as an oxidation. And because it's an oxidation, I'm going to make it plus 1.66 volts. So once you have your two half reactions, now you have a redox reaction. You have your oxidation and your reduction reaction. Now what you're going to do is make sure your electrons are balanced. So in the first reaction, I'm producing three electrons. And in the second reaction, I'm consuming two electrons. So what I'm going to do is multiply the first reaction by two, and I'm going to go ahead and multiply the second reaction by three. Now I want you to be careful. When you multiply these reactions by these coefficients, you do not do anything to the cell potential. Remember, this is the relative potential for an electron to jump from one chemical to another. This is an intensive property. It doesn't matter how much you have, you're just looking at the propensity for it to go one way or the other. So E naught can only be multiplied by negative one, and you only do that if you reverse the reaction. Otherwise, you just leave it alone. So once I go ahead and make sure my electrons are balanced out, I can add my reactions and then cancel out the electrons that appear on both sides. I'm going to simply add these half reaction potentials to get me my full cell potential. And so now what you can do is you can report to Elon Musk that this is the reaction that you're going to conduct. You're going to take two aluminums, combine them with three iodines, making three aluminum ions and six iodine ions. This is going to give you a battery with a potential of 2.2 volts. So based on that treatment that we showed on the last slides, if you look at the standard reduction potentials, you will see that things with a negative standard reduction potentials, well, they'll have a tendency to be oxidized because you want to reverse the reaction with the lower potential when you're combining two things. What you guys will also notice is things that have a positive potential tend to be reduced. And that's because when you combine two reactions, these are unlikely to be reversed. If we were to go ahead and look at the periodic table with those potentials, what you guys will see is the things on the right hand side of the periodic table, things like the halogens, well, these make good oxidizing agents. They want to be reduced. And so F2 is one of the strongest oxidizing reagents. Now, things on the left hand of the periodic table, they like to be oxidized. So they make good reducing agents. They want to give up their electrons. So lithium is a very strong reducing agent. Well, I hope that made sense. And remember to stay safe, Chem1B.